derivatives by looking at the indefinite integral notation to help us to solve these antiderivatives. The integral of f of x dx is equal to capital F of x plus c. Remember you can add or subtract the constant and still have a satisfactory antiderivative. Let's begin by a trinomial divided by a monomial. We don't have a quotient rule, but what we can do is simplify this by dividing through by x squared. So if we divide each of these terms by x squared, this will put it in a format that will be easier for us to work with. So this antiderivative, this now becomes the antiderivative of x squared, the antiderivative of negative x, and this we're going to write in the form 4x to the negative 2 dx. Now we can do each of these individually. We use the power rule for antiderivatives. So we get x to the third power divided by 3 minus, we add 1 to the exponent since it has a 1, becomes x to the second power divided by 2 minus 4. Now x to the negative 2, we add 1 to this, so it becomes x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1. And we add c. Now we could add c to each of the three terms, but we put lump all those together into one value of c. So our result here for this would be x to the third over 3 minus x squared over 2. And this we can write as plus 4. And the negative exponent here means put it in the denominator. Let's look at the antiderivative of a trigonometry expression. Notice this looks sloppy and not very easy to simplify. Many times when dealing with trigonometry antiderivatives, we want to use identities to make life easier for ourselves, and frequently things will cancel out. Now if we recall, 1 plus tangent squared is the same as secant squared of theta. Now we can cancel these two out. We had secant to the third in the numerator and secant squared in the denominator, so we're left with secant theta. So we have the integral of secant theta tangent theta d theta. As we recall from our basic formulas, this is simply the um, derivative of secant theta, so our answer here will be secant theta plus c. Finally, let's look at one more type of antiderivative we're going to run across, and that would be the fifth root of x squared dx. And once again we put it in a nicer form to work with. We write it in exponential form. Remember the exponent stays in the numerator and the index becomes the denominator. So to find the antiderivative we add 1 to the exponent, x to the 2 fifths. If we add 1 to 2 fifths we're going to add 5 fifths. So we have x to the 7 fifths divided by 7 fifths plus c, but it looks in a nicer form if we write this as 5x to the 7 fifths divided by 7 plus c.